Oh, hello again. It's the same old, dreary, uninspiring renationalization, financial rejigging, and empty slogans that have simply raised the board, boredom threshold that are emerging from the Jeremy Corbyn campaign for Labour leadership. The other contenders are dead in the water, finished, and the bookies are already paying out on Corbyn. However, the other day, the suggestion of women's only carriages on public transport, <clears throat> particularly underground or subway system, was mooted by some Corbynistas, and it certainly has raised a public debate. In fact, over a year ago, the Parliamentary Undersecretary for Transport in the coalition government, Claire Perry, proclaimed the same idea to be interesting, and she would look into it. There's plenty of high and low level sexual harassment and abuse of women on public transport. Reported sexual offences on the public transport system have risen by 25% over the last couple of years. So there's no denying there's a real problem and that problem stems almost completely from the mindless misogynistic attitude of some men towards women. But would women-only carriages alleviate the problem or create more? And what are the alternatives to voluntary segregation? Women's carriages may appear to be a step forward, but they are a mighty leap backwards. It recognises a real problem, but it will only exacerbate it. We anarchists are totally opposed to segregation. That's why we've been fighting against the poor doors. We want to break down all social barriers and not create more until it reinforces the ones that we have now. Women who choose not to ride in them, for whatever reason, will be recognised as fair game, more up for it, or loose and available by the slimy creeps that sexually harass and abuse women on public transport. Muslim women, for example, could come under attack from regressive elements in their own community for bringing shame and disrepute on, on themselves should they ride elsewhere than the women-only section. There will be many, many other problems. Okay, so what are the alternatives? First of all, within the official parameters, as they stand, there should be a reintroduction of a guard section where people who feel vulnerable could go. There should be platform staff on every station. All should be given training, including some paramedic skills to deal with all possible situations that may arise. And they should be well paid, just like the drivers. And we're not talking glorified ticket inspectors who themselves just harass people. I'd like to see the insult of first and second class travel done away with and the entire managerial clique abolished. The workers, staff and passengers groups will do a better job of running the system than the shambles that we have now. Fares should be slashed drastically. Society has to make the choice. Money, costs is only a fraction of the consideration. But there's another immediate response, something that we can all do, and that is to intervene and show solidarity if we witness harassment, sexual, racial or otherwise, and not to pretend to be reading the newspaper. We can't wait for a revolution to combat this behaviour and certainly expect anything from more meaningless laws. The state will only exacerbate the situation and create more problems with these laws, as I said before and they will divide and rule us more efficiently. The real solution is for people to stand up and support anybody being sexually harassed there and then, and to expect support from others. And that's how things work in reality anyway in the public space and on the streets. We need to stand up for ourselves and others and show real solidarity. That's really what it's all about at base level when you come to think about it. Bye.